So, guess what a terrible flu at the start of making this doll. My throat is still pretty sore. And if you follow me on Instagram, you might know that I have a problem with it. So, if I sound sick throughout the whole video, it's... It's because of my throat. It's just bad. But, about this doll. Um, before I show you my process, I want to talk a little bit about what I wanted to do for it. I had already prepped and rerouted the doll before filming. And my idea for her was to make her a cute fantasy pirate rather than a uh, realistic pirate. And I started off with a uh, Laguna doll that still had her leg fins. So I really wanted to make her into a pirate that literally came from the sea. But it didn't show that well in the end. And I might do something in the future to make her look more oceany. If that makes sense. But as I said, I started with the doll at home since my mom has a sewing machine and she knows how to use it. I'm really scared of it, really. So, first off, I started to follow a uh, tutorial made from Walker Colors. And I will leave her tutorial in the description and in a little eye, eye card if I can get that to work. But I did have to redo the, um, the pattern at first since I couldn't make it fit, so I did have to redo it. So because of the flu, I ended up uh, spending most of the time in my bed. And after stitching the top and, and added the lacing, I moved on to the nightmare of the clothes, the corset. It was pretty hard to stitch together, so I just made it off camera. And the headache just made it even harder to make. Uh, my mom helped me a lot with making these clothes. And by helping a lot, I mean she made like both of the skirts on the sewing machine. I wanted to have a, a top layer and a bottom one. Like the bottom one is made out of this really thin gathered lace. And my mom gathered it even more when, uh, before adding the elastic. Uh, the top skirt is way more simple. It's a uh, circle skirt with a push button in the back to hold it together. So after my mom had helped me a lot with making these clothes, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it without her. I went back to my school where I now actually live and I started with dressing the doll with the stuff I had. When I was homesick, the first thing I actually made was a belt. Like the same kind of belt you will make, yeah friendship bracelet out of and I did make it really tight so it ended up a bit curly but I managed to make it lay flat on her and I tied it around the waist together with a button. And to the top I added some pearl up shoulder straps and I also made her a pirate hat, mostly off camera since I had no idea how I was gonna make it. So that was a challenge. And for making your shoes I started off with making the heel out of polymer clay and I also made a compass that I didn't end up using and a monocular. Monocular? That's a hard word.
And once all of these were baked, the heels didn't fit well at all, so I had to curl them a little. I also didn't bake the heels completely, since I wanted to add more details. After all the reshaping, I added some soles to the heels and added some detail to them. And while totally forgetting to keep it all in frame and in focus. I baked in black and I washed it down to paint it first and made a huge mess. But the paint didn't really need to be watered down, so I just painted it in, painted it in two layers and they were just completely black and smooth. So while everything was drying, I saw it on the face. I had already masked her hair and given her a good layer of sealant before sketching the eyes and added some pastels. And all my materials that I used will be in the description below, so if you want to know anything just check that. I started out pretty blue so that the final green color had a bit more depth to it and was a bit more on the cool side rather than the warm yellowish side. I also wanted her eyes to be light green at the bottom and dark blue at the top. And she also had this uh, orange stain on the cheek that I ended up covering with a dark blue star. And I was uh, thinking of gluing on a rhinestone or something, but I didn't really want to deal with more glue than I already had to do. <laughs> and her face was shaded with a light blue color, and I also added it to both her cheeks and as an eyeshadow base. Instead of using a pink color for the blush, I instead used a peach color so that it wouldn't look as uh, strong against the huge amount of eyeshadow that she was going to get. And to bring a bit of uh, warmth to her face, since uh, she was looking a bit pale with all the browns and golds. I turned the uh, corners of the mouth up a little to make her smile more. And I colored the lips with the pastels in the same color. And all of that was done in just one layer. I did even add her eyebrows a little bit before seeing her again. 
and now it was time to start adding some green and build up the colors. I always draw the pinks of the waterline on the outer edge of the molded eyes because I find it a lot easier to get them even and I can make the eyes look even bigger without making it look weird. And this doll was getting some serious eyeshadow. And after the second layer, she was looking pretty uneven, but I was gonna fix that, so don't worry. I have some footage of uh, jabbing on her freckles, but at least I got some of it. And using a damp tissue, I removed some of her freckles, because some of them are a bit too dark and looked a bit too much like a sharpie. And to turn down the older green and blue, I added some brown eyeshadow closest to her eye. I say toning down as I'm not gonna add more green and blue to her eyes later. <laughs> Instead of using my white pencil on its own, I picked up the color with a wet brush and I used it as paint to get better coverage in fewer layers. And I did the same for other parts of her eyes and face too. I had to hold my breath while painting the thin line of black. And again, I'm using my uh, watercolor pencils and a brush. Uh, the star was also painted in with blue, but I also added some green in the middle while the paint was still wet so that the green spread out a bit more. And for some reason, I don't like using smooth gradients in my eyes. I just throw in three stripes and the rest of the eye details will may just make it look like gradient instead. I have four dolls that doesn't have these kind of eyes and three of them are Frankies. Actually all my Frankies still have different types of eyes. I was too scared of painting on the bottom lashes, so I just threw them on instead.
I was always scared to paint in the pupils, but they came out just right. I drew a thin line around the iris to make the edges even. Using a cold grey color, I also shaded the eyes a little. I really enjoy seeing the dolls with open mouths, so I really wanted to try it out myself on this one. I know you're not supposed to use actual eyeshadows on dolls, and I'm definitely not recommending it, but I really want to get some sh uh, shimmer on her. And I'm definitely gonna get my hands on some Prolix powders instead of using eyeshadow that can damage the face up. And I can finally call the drawing part done. As an extra highlight and a bit of sparkle, I added some star shaped glitters to her eyes. And I added an extra one on her cheek. And the eyelashes are always a pain to glue on. But with a super quick drying gel glue, it's a lot easier and they hold up pretty well. The eyelashes also got a little trim in the inner corner to make them look more natural. And the glue I use also helps to make the eyelashes stick even more. And now it was time to release her huge curly hair! Her face definitely turned out how I wanted it. And now it was time to put her all together again. But I was gonna need a stand for her. I did buy a pack of doll stands, but I bought the wrong size. Luckily, I can use my school's 3D printer, so I just made my own one instead. Before putting her head back on, I wanted to add all the accessories to her. 
So to attach her monocular and charm, I just use some golden beads and some sewing thread. And I could finally get her head back onto her body. And the stand I made broke. But I just glued it together again and it was fixed. This project took so much time and frustration, but I'm so happy with how she turned out and all that work was definitely worth it. I had so much fun taking photos of her and once the snow smelts, I'm definitely gonna get some more photos of her by the water. So when that time comes, I'm gonna post them on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me there. But in the meantime, you can check out my other videos and maybe subscribe if you want to see even more.